I'm here with my friend Inga Flint. She is a beautiful, beautiful painter who does a lot of abstract landscapes and colorful shapes. And I'm sure you've seen her work on Instagram because it's everywhere and it's gorgeous. And you should if you haven't. Inga, how are you? Good. That was so nice. <laughs> it's, it's always weird to hear someone introduce you because you're like, it's, it's so much nicer and sounds, you know, better than I really actually am. No, we are just always nicer to other people than we are to ourselves. I think. Exactly. That's exactly. how that actually goes. Yeah. But I asked Inga here today because I have been doing this series called the Artist Success Interview Series. And essentially the point of it is to help you find the belief in yourself that this art business that you are that you are making or that you are wanting to create is something that is actually viable, doable, completely possible. And so I'm bringing you the proof from other people outside of yourself to show you how they're doing it, what's working for them, et cetera, et cetera. Inga, anything you want to add to that? No, I think I just think that was very nice. Yeah. I don't think I have anything to add to that. Um... Sure you do. Okay. So <laughs> I'll start off with a couple questions because that uh, is always very helpful to have something to work off of. And I ask the same three questions in every single interview. So if you like this one, go watch some of the others. All right. First question, Inga, what has been the biggest mindset shift you needed in order to get where you are now? Wow. There's a, there's a story. So the short answer is like, you know, basically believing that my art was worthwhile to sell and that happened and it wasn't because like I sat down and you know did meditations and you know thought really hard like I wish I could say yeah it was all me I'd like no not me at all so my friend was starting a gallery and she was like I want to you know I want to stock some of your work I love your work can I do it and I was like sure I'll just send over and I sent over a box and I was like you know what it just it probably won't sell but it's nice that it's gone and you know she can just do something with that and I think we sold, she just, it just sold really quickly. And I was like, what, you know, what, what? And so I kept sending her more work and it kept selling. And, and so in a way that's kind of what sparked it. I was like, oh, people want to buy my work. And I was like, that's, that's really weird. I never thought like that was possible kind of thing. So yeah, so that's because someone else believed in me, then I could like in turn believe in myself. I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And I wish that I could say that happens that way for everyone, but I'd say that's one of the more rare instances that I've heard that someone else was able to prove it to you. Yeah. I'm so yeah. glad it happened that way for you. Yeah, but I know it's, 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 it is, it is weird. And, and I'm, I'm lucky to have, you know, friends who have like literally this gone out of their way for me. So, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. But, I bet you also are a amazing friend. I know that you, I know that you are because I know your personality and I know the love that you have in your heart for other people. So it's not oh. all coming from there. You are giving as well. And that's one of the things I'm sure that helps make that happen. But I wanted to point out that you said that you had someone around you who believed in you so strongly. And that's really, that's an important part of the equation as well mm -hmm. to help you move through that faster. If you're surrounding yourself with people who don't really think you can do it and are like, mm, you know, that's cute. Good luck with that <laughs> little project you've got going over there. Probably not going to have much success. Yeah. But if you find people who think that you are amazing and probably you were telling them they're amazing back and you're just given the love that's going to be a really helpful tool looking for my next question what's the one practical step that you have taken that has gotten you the furthest I feel like I've learned this one from you and it's really short but stop thinking and just do it <laughs> <laughs> yes so easy to say yeah I know and it's so hard to do because I have so many things like literally floating in my head like I could do this or this I've got you know like probably every creative like about a billion ideas and how many of them I actually act on is, you know, a very, very small percentage. So, you know, I think after talking to you a lot and I've realized, you know, I just actually have to 
actually just stop thinking and just just do it was it you told me like count to five and then do it something <laughs> can you give me an example of something that you have stopped thinking about and just done it well one of the things I'm still working on it is remember how we were talking about doing a pseudo commission series Mm, yeah. um, of landscapes and so getting people to send in photos because sometimes I run out of photos or it's interesting to see other people's special places and so I got people to, to, to send in photos of, of their special place that, that is home to them and so I'm in the middle of painting them and like the stories are so special and it's been really interesting because they're not the, the source material people have sent me are not ones that I would have automatically chosen to paint myself yeah. I would be like no, that's not the format I painted and I would just look for another. But again, it's been really interesting to, to do it because I've had to like broaden my skill set a lot. So yeah, so I think I was talking to you and you're like, hey, just go and announce it and, and do it. So I made a landing page and I just I announced it and people came. <coughs> so I feel like maybe maybe next year I'll just grow that to being a commission-based service that I provide. But it's been really fun and it's been really interesting to just paint things in a different way and push out the style and the technique in a way that I wouldn't have done naturally on my own. Yeah. Yeah. There's always unintended consequences of having an idea and then actually doing it. So you probably, this was a while ago when we were talking about doing it, but I think the point was to give people an, an easier step to purchasing. But the consequence was that you are pushing yourself as an artist and growing in ways that you might not have before, which is only going to lead to more amazing things for you. So sometimes, almost always, getting stuck in our heads instead of following those urges is the thing that is keeping us stuck. It is such a trap. Yeah, such a trap. Like, and so I, I suppose after doing that, I feel like, oh yeah, I, okay, I'm going to go do this and then I'm going to go and do that and I'm going to go do that as well. So it feels nice to actually want to to, to bring these into fruition, I suppose. But yeah. yeah. I, I think the coolest thing about it personally is because you are an artist. You create things out of nothing. And this is just the business side of that. You are having an idea, you're having some inspiration, and then you're going and creating it out of nothing, just like you would a piece of art. And it's when you take on that sort of energy that the marketing and the business side of things can become fun. And it feels like, you know, the art starts to dictate the marketing, if that makes sense. And for me, that's fun because it feels more organic in that regard. Yeah, making it not not thinking of the business first, just thinking of, you know, what I'd like to do and then, and then, you know, doing it and then thinking, I don't know, that's probably not the way most people do it, but I, I enjoy things when it's an organic, it feels like an organic process rather than something that I've contrived to sell work. Yeah. I'm not interested in, in doing that. I just want to see what, where the path will lead me and then, and then go from there, I suppose. Yeah. Beautiful. I love that. And I think they feed each other. Like, I think the yeah. art feeds the, the marketing path, feeds the art, and it, it all becomes one instead of being separate, which is, I think, where it gets tricky. Not tricky. Tricky is not the right word, but just stuffy or yeah. you said organic, so we can go with inorganic. Yeah, and it all comes from a place of what do I want to create? I think that's where you start. What do I want to create? How does all of it go together just what you're doing no I really love the way you put that I think I'm gonna I'm gonna need to write that down yeah but you can rewatch this so <laughs> you got <laughs> it <laughs> I don't know if I want to rewatch it because sometimes you know you hear your own voice and you're like, I sound like that I'm like is that what I really look like? like no I just know I can't deal with it you know no you probably don't <laughs> no I do I do I don't watch my own videos again if I can help it yeah, like I did a YouTube, it was like a gallery, a, an artist talk with a gallery and I, I'm i just not going to watch that again. And that's okay. You put no. it out there. I, you... I don't even think I'm going to put it out there. I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to bury this. I don't think no, I did a very good job. Bury Let's bury it in the back garden kind of killing. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know, but that would require me to rewatch it 
to decide whether I'm going to be read or not. Like my friend was watching it. She's like, it was good. And I was like, yeah, I, don't, I think you're just being nice to me. Have someone who's not your friend watch it because then you'll know that they're not lying. But also, I'm going to give you an example real quick. A couple of these interviews that I've done, I go, oh, I don't know how that went. Was that good? Well, people want to watch that. I don't know. But then I put them out and I just get a flood of emails. I said, I'm going to watch that over and over. It's so inspiring. Aww. Thanks for putting that out. That person is so amazing. They were never talking about me, by the way. They were talking about the other Oh, person. no, you're totally, um, you're totally But the point that I was trying to make was it's always better than you think it is in your head. We get in our heads. This is this is the problem. It's the same with painting, though. So, you know, it's like the same with painting. This is crap. This is rubbish. This is this is. And then if you put it in a different context and you put it in a frame, you're like, oh, oh, it's actually okay. It's just you're too much in your own head, you know, mm-hmm. to conceive mm-hmm. it properly. Yeah. That's part of t- that's part of just doing it is staying out of here, which is easier said than done, <laughs> but. All right. Number three, what advice do you have for someone who isn't sure that they have what it takes to get to that next level? Whether that is reaching out to a gallery or actually being able to sell things consistently or whatever that level is for them. No, I I suppose, I don't know if this is the right response, but for me, it's, you know, if you look on Instagram, there's a lot of ability just to compare to other people go oh, this person's doing this or this person's doing that or there's a certain kind of speed that it seems to run at which is a like hype speed so I feel like what we don't say enough is you know you can do it at your own pace and it doesn't all have to happen now or in three months it can happen or like within you know give yourself five years and you don't have to hurry and it doesn't mean therefore don't go and do things but you don't have to move as, as quickly as maybe you think you have to I suppose I feel like like I just started back painting in 2015 when my daughter was born and it was just like really on a whim I just saw the 100 day project on Instagram and I was like oh that looks fun and I was like I had been doing some painting swaps or like we were planning on doing painting swaps with two of my other friends and we never did it and I totally always overthink it and then so when I just started this and it was just amazing to see how much growth I could have in 100 days and also just watching you know over the years how it's just every year it's slowly grown and I know that I could do things quicker but it's actually nice to not have to run all the time you can just go actually you can do it at your own pace it's so easy to be influenced I think by what everyone's doing on social media or but it's okay to to just take baby steps you know obviously take steps but it doesn't have to be super quick all the time yeah no it doesn't But I will also say, don't not do things, which you did say, but I'm just re-emphasizing. Don't make excuses to not do things. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not not an excuse thing, but it's not having to be, you know, you know, it's easy. Oh, I should be, I should (laughs) I should already be doing this and I should this person's doing this and I'm oh my gosh, do I need to make Christmas ornaments? I'm like, no, you just Figure out what you want to do. No, don't make them. Don't do, um, don't do all that. Don't do that. Don't <laughs> unless, do that. unless you really want to. If that's the thing you want. But the thing is, work. now that I live in the States, I'm like, oh, there are some really cute ornaments. Because usually I like to go out and buy a couple of, I bought some like Australian animals last year. And so we've got, and they're made from felt oh, yeah. and they're really cute. But, you know, it's nice to buy some personalized. And I'm like, oh, now that I live here, it's actually easy to get them sent to you rather than if I was in Australia or New Zealand. It's just like, well, Will they get here for Christmas? Nobody knows. <laughs> <coughs> so, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say, which is probably a good thing. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I want to show your Instagram real quick because it's so beautiful. Look how beautiful she is. Look at all this beautiful. Thinking without talking. This is her handle. We were just discussing whether or not she should change it to her name. I don't know. So if you can't find thinking without talking at some point, look up Inga. I'm not even going to try to pronounce your middle name. Is that your middle name? Yeah, it's Satya. Satya. See, I would have got it right. I should have tried. I think the, the reason why I don't actually use my name a lot is because it's, for most people, they go, I I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah. So that's why I often don't, because they'll be like, NG, NG. And I'm like, you know, it's, yeah, and, and a whole, like a hundred other variations. So I think maybe I just make it easier and not use my name because it's not always the most pronounceable 
or to figure out, I suppose. Yeah. Well, let's do it together. I had to practice. I'll be honest. When Ing and I first started working together, she voice messaged me and was like, I hate to tell you this, but you're saying my name wrong. And I was like, crap. So I started practicing. It took me a while. Oh, I, it's, it. I know because it's a German name and it's meant to be Inge. But when I was five and starting school, I realized that no one would be able to pronounce it. But there was a famous uh, rugby player uh, and he was Samoan and his name is Vainga Tuigamala, but everyone called him Inga the Winger. So I could easily say to people, oh, it's Inga, like Inga the Winger. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay. And they're like, okay, I've got you. So I don't know how I worked that out at five, but at five, I was like, this isn't going to work the way my parents pronounce it. This is not going to work for a New Zealand context. Let's, let's shift it, shall we? I think you should still do it. I think I would remember that. I have a friend named Evie who, when I met, I called her Evie. But she said, no, it's Evie like Chevy. And I could never forget uh, that. That's good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly like that. Except if you go to like places in the UK, they're like Inga the Winger because they say, yeah. So I'm like, no, 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 that's not the way oh, it works. Okay. That's anyway. confusing. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if you want to go follow her on Instagram, I highly recommend you do. Her captions are beautiful as well backslash thinking without talking right yep do that right yep that's thinking right. without talking okay thank you inga i appreciate thank you. you thanks for coming